Hey everyone, today I'd like to do a little talk on the Canon ES 5D 2 and its difference with the Canon ES 5D Mark III. Um, both are full frame DSLRs and I guess this review would be of interest to people looking to upgrade from the Mark II to the Mark III, but also people looking to buy a full frame DSLR or Canon model uh, for the first time and they'd be wondering whether to spend the 3000 plus on the Mark III or perhaps get a second hand Mark II. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with some look and feel to begin with. The Mark II being on the left and the Mark III being on the right here. I guess the thing that I noticed straight away was that the power button, which was down here, just like in the older model Canons, uh, has now moved up to the mode select switch which um, I'm I personally much prefer. And um, we also have the video and still shoot mode switch, which is similar to some of the other Canon, more modern Canon models here, which also incorporates the live view. Um, obviously the, uh, the Mark II also had live view, but the button was here. Really, um, what I noticed the most about the Mark III is how similar it is to the 7D. If you have a 7D, I've got a 7D here, I can show you. The 7D also looked much the same with the power switch up the top here and uh, live view, the switch here, and everything's much the same. Obviously, not everything's the same. The buttons have moved around once again. The other thing that I like uh, a little more about the Mark III is the new grip and rubber around the grip. There's a new contour here where your thumb goes, um, which is larger. This one really didn't, really didn't fit my thumb. And the rubber runs all the way around over the card slot here, which it didn't do in the Mark II. It's not a big difference, but certainly when you, when you grip the Mark III, you can feel that the more rubber, it's slightly softer rubber, and it just feels more comfortable in your hand. Overall, I like the move to having the, um, the text or the graphics on the buttons as well, instead of above and below them, it just looks a little tidier. So overall, the look and feel of the camera, you know, it's, a, it's just like another Canon DSLR, um, but you know, they make these incremental improvements, and certainly I've been using a 7D and a 5D2 for a while, and I, it always irritates me going back to the 5D2 after using a slightly more modern Canon, so these small improvements um, are welcomed. Now onto the menus. Certainly there was never anything wrong with the menu system in the Mark II. It worked perfectly fine. The Mark III, however, has seen some minor improvements with uh, some slightly fancier menus and a lot more options, and everything just happens a little faster. Next up is the screen, the rear screen on the back, which has had a slight increase in size from three inches to 3.2 inches, but the, the real difference is that this is this new screen which, which is somehow moved right out to the edge of the glass, whereas this one is set back in the glass a little. Once again, um, the 7D had this similar um, new screen, if you're familiar with the 7D. Um, it's not a big difference, but it certainly makes the image easier to see and nice and clear um, in comparison. There's, um, you know, it's, it's these little incremental changes. And the next feature I noticed that was also similar to the, uh, the 7D, and I'll bring the 7D back here again. Not that this is a comparison between the uh, Mark III and the 7D, but it's kind of useful to have it here, is um, we now have the, uh, the digital level on the Mark III. What is the digital level, you say? It's this little nifty thing. Um, where is it? 
this guy here. It looks like you're flying a flight simulator. It uh, helps you figure out when your camera is vertically and horizontally straight. And this is a feature that uh, was incorporated here on the, on the 7D. It was the first time I saw it was on the 7D. And, um, and it can be used in live mode as well. It's a, uh, it's a neat little feature. So that's uh, something new for the Mark III. Okay, 7D, get out of here. I'm not in this review really. Another incremental improvement between the Mark II and the Mark III is the shutter speed. The shutter speed in the old Mark II, 3.9, um, which was a reasonable shutter speed, but uh, uh, still a little sluggish. The new one has a frame rate of six um, frames per second. If you want to hear the difference between those, this is the, uh, this is the old two model. A respectable rate. But here on the Mark III, Much faster. Now, uh, personally, I prefer the sound of the Mark III as well. And the Mark III has a, uh, has a new feature as well, which uh, is in some of Canon's more modern um, cameras, which is the silent mode. Let me, uh, let me turn on the silent mode. And you'll hear the difference. And back. the silent mode so yes very nice so the next feature uh, and certainly one that I think will be one of the more popular reasons for upgrading is the improved um, 61 point focus as opposed to the nine point in the old model. If you look at the, uh, the Mark II, well I can't show you through the viewfinder, I can certainly show you on the back screen, we had uh, nine selectable. Um, and while that was never really a big problem for me personally, because I'd use a different camera for sports or for, um, for high speed, um, I know for a lot of people there has been a real drawback with the, the 5D2 is in the, uh, in the 5D Mark III, we've got the lovely 61 point uh, autofocus, which um, well I can't really demonstrate it to you, is a, obviously a big improvement. Next up is the, um, is the low light performance improvements. If you have a look at these two photographs that I've taken uh, with the same lens and the same amount of light in the room. These are full-size one-to-one crops. You see the, the photo on the left with the 5D2 at its maximum ISO of 12,800. It's a lot grainier, whereas the improved performance is obvious with the, the Mark, Mark III on the right. Uh, the Mark III not only has improved at, uh, at 1,200, at 12,800, but can actually go all the way up to um, 25,600 ISO. That looks pretty grim at that point though. Another new feature is the 100% viewfinder, which if you look, which I can't demonstrate to you unfortunately, but uh, you have to take my word for it. In the, in the Mark III, everything's just a little larger and a little bit clearer. It's a bit like uh, if you've ever used one of the One Series Models, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's nothing wrong with the, the, the Mark II viewfinder. It works perfectly fine. But you can see a slight difference, a little bit brighter, a little bit clearer in the Mark III. Another improvement is the addition of a SD card slot as well as the regular CF slot in the side here. So to sum up, the Mark II versus the Mark III. Is it worth the cost of upgrading? Is it worth buying a Mark III over a Mark II if this is your first full frame? Well, it really comes down to how deep are your pockets because the Mark III right now, it's worth well over $3,000, whereas the Mark II, 
you know, you could pick one of these up for probably fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars second hand. Really, there's no problem with the Mark II. I've owned my Mark II for over three years, and it's been a fantastic camera. It's done everything that I've asked of it. Um, and the Mark III is an incremental improvement. You know, nothing here is going to radically improve your photos. Um, maybe the better low light in some occasions. Maybe the new autofocusing may improve some of the focusing on my terrible shots. Um, and some of the other toys, the look and feel. You know, these are all slight improvements. But overall, you know, they're both great cameras. And it really just comes down to: Can you afford to buy the Mark III? If you're not sure. I might recommend that you consider a better lens. Lenses always improve your photography a lot more than the camera itself. So I hope this has been useful to you and uh, thank you very much.